arcade the blah, 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 stupid live video, Mary. You're right. Live video is terrible. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the third. Actually, the third annual. <laughs> the third. <laughs> Uh, the arcade daddy. We're all super fucking giddy. We're all so excited to read this book. Obviously, not. Um, so it's our it's our third book club, which is my fourth attempt to try to say that. And to for the last month, for the month of April, we have been e eating. We have been reading. <laughs> um, oh, I'm way too giddy. Uh, we have been reading Adam's. Oh, no, Adam didn't write it. Oh my god, this is going nowhere fast. Um, we have been, uh, Adam's selection was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Um, so Adam is going to tell us a little bit about the book and God, just Adam take okay, it, I'm take it from there. Over. I'm way too giddy for this as well, so <laughs> okay, it's gonna go downhill. Okay, um, so the book, as Declan just said, uh, that I picked was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Um, interesting book. Um, the premise of it, it's set in Prague for the most part, um, and there's kind of layers of the world. So there is the Seraph world, which is kind of angels. There is kind of the underworld then, which kind of has, um, oh my God, what, what are they called? Uh, Chimera. 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 Sorry, that's it. Um, and they're kind of the underworld. Um, and then the main character, who we're not sure how to pronounce it, but we think it's Carew. Um, <laughs> it's Carew. Um, <laughs> and uh, the story kind of follows her. Um, she's not sure who she is, but she's been raised by monsters, um, which are the chim chimera. Um, Brimstone is kind of her father figure, I suppose. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the premise of the book. And she's trying to discover who she is, and she eventually discovers who she is, and she meets angels, and there's drama, and there's pretty kick-ass fight scenes, and there's romance. So um, yeah, that's the premise of the book. That is so, yeah, in a um, nutshell. So where do we start? How do we? We all learned it was great. <sighs> okay, Mary, you, you can take. Okay, Mary, you can take it. So cause... it was great, right? The first few, first couple of chapters now, I did not think it was my cup of tea. Like, when I was reading it, I was like, oh, stupid emo girl with blue hair and tattoos, and it's in stupid Prague, and there's a stupid guy that's her boyfriend that she hates and doesn't hate. So I kind of thought it was going on a completely different path that it actually went in. Um, I didn't really even read the blurb. I just kind of started reading it. Um, also, way better cover than the blue one that Adam has. Um, trash as hell. But... Um, whenever it started getting into the Chimera stuff, whenever we met Brimstone, we met Issa, and we kind of, it kind of started opening up what actually her life was. Because whenever I was uh, reading about the sketchbook thing, I was kind of just like, this is just stuff to kind of make her seem more interesting than she is. But then once Brimstone and everything else happened, it was really, really great. I didn't expect to love it, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it for the past couple of days since I finished it. So, I mean, what does that tell you? I mean, obviously I loved it if I can't stop thinking about it. Plus, I've already ordered book two. Or it's emotionally scarred you to the point that you've now been inducted. Did, 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 I have all three of them as well. Syndrome. Stockholm syndrome from a book, Mary. <laughs> no, and I'm not usually into romancy things and stuff. It wasn't that romantic either. It wasn't, no. No, it, it was... It was balanced, I think. Yeah. And you were right, the, the fight scenes were really well written. They were yeah. really good. They flowed so nicely. They were just I, really, I, I liked how they were just kind of described and written. It was very like epic and you could like literally visualize the fight scenes. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's, she's really good at that. Like, you can really like see what the characters look like and everything. Like, yeah. um, uh, I kept going back and forth between thinking, oh, this girl's a terrible writer to, oh my God, she's so talented. You know, it was really strange. Like some of the, do you know do you know whenever you read a sentence it's like and then this happened you know she didn't need to include the the bit where it was like and then this happened because the rest of her you know it was telling rather than showing but if she got rid of that stuff i mean that was just basic things really i mean these are kind of her first books aren't they i think so so yeah i think, I think, so. I think, she did a, I think she's a great writer um I'm not... I, yeah i like her descriptions and i like i like her style of writing i think and like at, at the, it's a very slow like her world building is very very slow um yeah but i think by three quarters of the way through it i was loving it a lot more than i did in the first few chapters like it, it definitely i think overall i'm 50 50 on it because i think the start is too slow for me but then 
by the end of it, I did love it, and I want to read the rest. So, yeah. Um, okay, I. Okay, so we've, we've kind of we've done a clever transition of I liked it. I'm in the middle, and I didn't like it at all. Um, I think the. Okay, I actually quite enjoyed the the world building at the very start. I mean, the the whole thing kind of got me. I I, I think Mary has it right. There were times when I was reading, I was like, oh my god, she's actually terrible. This is like something you write, you know, you know, in secondary school. It, it was just, I, I, it, it, it was young adult, for example. Um, I just, I couldn't get into it at all. And then there were other times where I'm like, oh my god, she's she's ridiculously descriptive in such a beautiful way. Like she spends, I, I just, I mean, I thought the character description of Caro or Caro uh, was woeful i was like oh i just I, I didn't get into it at all and then she describes the the scenery in prague or you know from from the angel's point of view looking down and stuff like that you're like oh my god this is it's actually breathtaking like, like that i could see myself there i could see i could see it yeah um, and i was like holy how does she flip-flop so bloody much mm -hmm. um i for me i actually i mean i really liked um as I said, I really like the world building and, and even the character building at the very, very start. I just, um, you know, when she finally, when we meet Brimstone and we go to the shop and um, the, all this thing with teeth and having been able to grant wishes and stuff, I was like, this is so freaking cool. I was like, I'm sold on this. Yeah. And then, bam, it's a romance story. It, but it wasn't like overly stoppy bullshit. Like, it wasn't insta -love. Do you know, it, it really it, wasn't. Yeah, it was. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It, it, it creeped me out. I was like, okay. Uh, it it essentially kind of boiled down. I don't know if this would be a spoiler, but like they're obviously made for each other. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, it was a fake thing. No, I but just, he, was, he knew her in another life, and it was like he had this pull towards her. That was the whole thing with Magic. Yeah, he had this, he so had he stalked her. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody does. That's what every talk. doctor does. Everyone, um, everybody, okay, but he he hated her at first. He had like a not even hated, but like he had he was completely indifferent to her. It would have been different if you know she walked out of the portal and he was like, oh my god, so pretty, I love her. You know, that's totally not what happened. Yeah, and I think he had like an inkling as well that you know because she was so familiar to him. Plus, the book was it just it could have been it could have been Twilight and it wasn't Twilight, right? Yeah. It, it like, grew, it grew, you know, in a really realistic kind of way. Obviously, angels and demons not realistic, but the way it kind of progressed and stuff, like there was almost like a friendship element, like a like a stronger than, like a really hard bond first. Yeah. It was just so nice to watch it. Go where it my was. favorite part was when Susanna actually met both of them together, and she just walks in and she's like, "Have to mate or something like that." And I yes, like, this yeah, yeah, it's like you said, yeah. mate or something like that. Or why are you not mating right now? Yeah, like, and it was yeah. so funny. <laughs> oh. And it was, it was, I think it was those kind of character dynamics and character interactions. I was like, I love this. Like it was. I don't know. I just liked them. Yeah, there, there were there were times um, like like I said, she is. She, she had she had a knack for just getting a scene right. Um, yeah. Like when she first talks about the you know the pub that herself and Susanna go to, and then she spends ages explaining why they go there. Um, you know, like that they you know they were kind of commissioned to do the mural or do artwork, and, and now they go there all the time, and it's like their thing. I was like that. A lot of that felt really really real. Uh, and then the scenes where she's with Brimstone, and then she 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 oh, like is it Issa the the snake. Mm, snake lady. I, she was. Like, I just love the description of her, uh, and you know how you know how she uses the snakes to make sure that no one does anything wrong in the shop. Uh, it was just things were so good. And then what I was saying was when, when the first time she uses the doors and she goes to Paris, and that explanation again was absolutely brilliant. And then this bizarre situation of this kind of young adult teenage girl, age person buying you know tusks uh, in a black market. Um, Kind of auction, and then dragging those back across the streets of Paris, and then onto a tram it was you know it was bizarre, but it was really and I was I was getting really really into it, and then it just I I I, I didn't I didn't the whole angels versus demons versus you know Romeo and Juliet because I I won't say Twilight I won't say Twilight because I I wouldn't I wouldn't throw it into that it's unfair dumpster but um it was the whole you know star crossed lovers that's what it is it's a star crossed lovers story because. You know, again, 
to be going to spoilers here, or is it okay to go to spoilers? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I look for them. I mean obviously, you know, we realize when we realize and when Carol realizes what she actually is, mm -hmm. um, you're like, uh it. why? No. What? It reminded me of Saga. You know, coming together across races and like he didn't fall in love with her because, you know, she was beautiful or whatever. He fell in love with her soul. You know, yeah. the first person who showed him mercy, you know, who showed it doesn't have to be just constantly killing each other all the time. Plus, I really like the, the whole thing with, you know, angels. All of them are beautiful, but all of them are flawless. So it doesn't even really matter what you look like because it's all about personality. But if everyone looks basically the same level of beautiful, how much does it even matter? Do you know? Like I loved how, how much like she touched his heart and saved him and that he just couldn't get her out of his head. Do you know? Oh, I just loved it. It was so good. And like I feel like those parallels as well to Carve the Mark where like the magic, um the rules of magic in this uh, require pain to make wishes. Yes. And I was like that's it, it had parallels to Carve the Mark then. I d I don't know, I kinda liked it. Like yeah. it kind of just so many unique elements of the book that you just yeah. You know, there's so many tropes over and over again. You see so much in books. It's basically the same. Like anytime I see that there's going to be a ball in a book, I'm just I shut down. I'm just like, oh my god, I'm seeing a book again. But you know, there was the the snake collars. You know, there were the teeth that you can create like beings out of the teeth and stuff with magic, and the whole pain thing with the magic as well, so that people like flog themselves as well to use magic, and just the whole thing of the chimera because that could have gone badly wrong. Do you know? It could have been like kind of a creepy bestiality type thing but it just worked so well i mean i was so touched whenever her whole thing came out with the wishbone that, yeah. that was you know it was amazing because I, I didn't get i understand why akiva was so oh my god i can't she can't find out because whenever she found out her past i was like was he was he worried that she'd think that because he went and found her in that caged like kingdom area that she, he caused her death is that like why he was freaking out and then whenever he said the thing about brimstone and everything, I was like, oh my God, the whole pieces just came together. I was yeah. so devastated for them. I wanted them to just hug and be together. I can't, I can't wait to read the next one. I'm so excited. Yeah. You um, definitely loved it. <laughs> I loved it, yeah. Mary was very impartial, Blair. Oh um, my God. I, um, I, it, didn't, it didn't do enough for me. It, it just, I, I'm not sold. I don't, I don't care about where it goes. I just, it just, I didn't, it didn't latch on. I'm sorry. It just, I did not. I, like I said, I, I was actually really sold on the whole idea, and I mean, it, I really enjoyed maybe the first half of the book, um, and then it just, it, it kind of shot itself in the foot um, for me. So I'm, I'm not going to be reading um, book two or three. No. So depressing. Seriously, I, like I'm the complete opposite to you. Like, you're going to read the other three. You're going to read the other two. Yeah, no, I will read it. I have them here. Um, but like, it's Declan loved the start and didn't like the end. I didn't like the start and loved the end. That. Yeah. You remember the bat? It was, I think it was only a few pages in and it was like, she was taught, she was in her mind and going through her day. And then she was like, so he, someone came up behind her and she was like, someone is biting me or something. And then she kind of, she, the, the sentence was like, she turned around annoyed. I was like, if someone is biting your neck, bitch, you like, start rocking the shit out of whoever is biting your neck like that was so bizarre and it turned out to only be casimir which is oh my god the scene where she throws him through the door love that and she like she left after been through so much and she was injured like she'd just been kicked out by brimstone and then she literally just throws him over her shoulder i was like oh my god i love her i, I know it was so good and she didn't even her. like run to him she was just like, like okay yeah. <laughs> you know, dead to, deadpan but it was also good as well, just the general character consistency. Because you know the way she talked about the thing at the start with Susanna about butterfly, stomach butterflies? And like that kind of made several different appearances throughout the book. Like she went back to that kind of stuff. And especially like even whenever she was tech, you know, we thought she was still kind of normalish, just walking about town and looking up at the skies and kind of feeling that something is missing. Or, you know, when she's dancing with someone that's her legs are going the wrong way or something. It was just so cool because I really didn't see it coming. I didn't think she was what she was I, I really I was I mean I kind of guessed just before it came out but I didn't know how it was going to work out but I think it worked really well yeah I'm really curious if it's going to make a movie if this I'm going to google it are they making a movie I don't know I'm really curious because I'd say they would it oh seems like the perfect target for like a YA movie yeah because I was imagining some of the scenes in my head I was like oh that looks so good in a movie 
I'd be genuinely so excited. No. No. I think I think I think it could work. I do think I mean what was that um was it City of Bones? Was that one of the young adults? Yeah. yeah. Um My favorite you know, I mean that that was you know that I do you, I think they kind of fall into the same kind of genre ish. Um yeah. so yeah, I, I do think it could work as a movie. I don't again, I don't think it would be one that I would immediately gravitate towards. Um okay, I'll put it this way. I actually, I preferred, I did prefer Daughter of Smoke and Bone to Car of the Mark. Okay, that's fair. That's, I, so, I mean, I really disliked um, the, the Car of the Mark. And again, I quite enjoyed, um, uh, I quite enjoyed the world building in Car of the Mark. And then I felt it kind of went nowhere. Um, this had me, I'd say, like I said, up to about halfway through. Um, again, I thought the whole thing of, you know, the, uh, the angels kind of traveling around the world, scorching the doors, leaving the, the black handprints. I was like, this is so freaking cool. Where is this going? And then slowly you start to piece it together. Like, okay, this is really, and then bam, look, I just, the, the I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't latch on to the kind of, the, 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 the story between Akiva and Karu. It just, it, it, it didn't mesh with me. And I don't think that's because I thought they were crappy characters. Like I thought Akiva was deadly when he first, he first came through. You're like, holy crap, this is deadly. Um, I just, I, it just, it kind of went nowhere for me. Um, okay. Yeah. What do, do you, hearing our thoughts on it though, do you kind of feel a bit better about it? Like, do you, do you see it a wee bit differently now? Seeing like we brought up the, with the good points that we brought up? Yeah, no, I mean, I, cause like listening to you, I mean, previously I would have said, I actually preferred Car of the Mark. Um, but listening to you guys kind of explain it and, what your perceptions of it were. I mean, obviously you talk things differently away from it than I did, clearly, because um, you guys enjoyed the book. Um, but I, I didn't, like I, said, I, like I said, I didn't, the relationship didn't grab me, um, but it did for you, obviously. Um, and hearing what your interpretation of that was, it does, it does kind of sell a little bit more and not in a, oh, you've convinced me, this is a good book. I must go out and buy book two and three now. I still don't care. Um, <laughs> But I don't hate it as much as I did Carol the Mark. Okay, but if you if you could pick a favorite character though, because obviously you know there's obviously one character that you liked. Who would have? Yeah, Issa. Issa. Yeah. Right. Although I thought her name was stupid, I was like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the names are hmm. weird. In this I will call her Issa. <laughs> <laughs> But like even the other um, Seraphim, like Hazel, and like all the names are really just random and like I awkward thought names. Was a girl. Oh yeah, it was a girl, but like it, it's the okay. sister. Lyra's was, 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 was the girl. Lyra's was the girl, and Hazel was the boy. Oh, okay, oh. yeah, you're right. But um, yeah, I really paid attention to this book, Adam. Listen yeah. to what I say. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I I loved Brimstone. It's, I I really liked him even before we found out exactly his, what his kind of character was and what he does and the sacrifices he made. But I loved Brimstone. I, I just had when when she was. When she was describing the whole, when she was describing Rainstone and the whole kind of the shop and how it all works, did anyone else picture the villain from uh, The Princess and the Frog, the Disney movie? No. That's what I had in, I don't know why, oh, but that's that sense, kind of what I had I, in my head. That sort of voodoo witch doctor, you know, it just, I don't know, I had, he, I had him in my head the entire time. That kind of, it's that kind of ooze and charm that you're, it, it, you know, you're, you're, you're repulsed and drawn to it the same I don't know that he wasn't particularly charming brimstone <laughs> no but it was it, I don't I'm not saying he was like oh look he's so suave and sophisticated but it was just you kind of even though he was this terrifying creature but you were still kind of going I want to know more about him um so I don't know that's that's just the entire time that's who I had that's who I pictured in my head I had a giant like bowl with like teeny tiny legs and like um spectacles like reading spectacles <laughs> that's what I imagine with big scary I'm yeah, I'm the same. That's kind of what I imagined. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I, I was kind of imagining the beast from Beating the Beast, but more bullish yes. and more... Rough, I don't know. Yeah, more shorter and more kind of... Yeah, like built. a big, big torso and then... Yeah. yeah. Cartoony kind of down the way, you know? Yeah. Um, did you guys ever re read uh, One Piece? No. No. No, whatever. Okay, you need to, but whatever. Anyway, there's like a big uh, snake kind of 
snake kind of bodyguards in one of the islands and stuff and um, that's who I imagined as Issa like this big curvy snake with like sassy attitude um, but I couldn't really picture Twiga and Yasri very well you know one of them was described yeah. as half parrot or something and I was like and, yeah I couldn't I couldn't either you're like what the bloody hell and then yeah, I, I wasn't I was like is she more bird than human and if so why the hell is she carrying trays of stuff yeah it just what? no I, yeah that one missed the mark, but I also the like, yeah. The moth hummingbirds didn't think that quite worked as well, because I just imagined moths the size of birds, and it creeped me out. Yeah. Maybe that's the point. Kishmish was pretty cool, though. Yeah, Kishmish was cool. The first time you he, you know he comes in to meet him, you see him. He the first time he delivers the message. Yeah, no, I do I agree. Kishmish was kind of cool. I thought he was going to be way more of a thing. Like I thought he would yeah. like from a bird or something to like a like a another person or something like that like a smaller yeah like a baby yeah something like that but um yeah i mean i didn't really care much i suppose when kishmas died i suppose i didn't make much of an impression on me but um i mean i don't know maybe i just didn't see much of him or it was concentrated on other things like imagining beautiful akiva <laughs> his tiger eyes it's pretty easy to imagine him like just Male model. Like, they would be yeah. really cool cosplays. Like, you could do some really cool cosplays from this. Oh, yeah, you could, yeah. You could, yeah. Yeah. I think Kiru's tattoos would be kind of annoying. But, yeah, you could. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose it'd be fairly easy as well with the Hamzas and the... Mm -hmm. Like, literally, once... To be fair, once I... W w the minute I read that she had blue hair, I totally got a stereotype in my head, and I was like, this is just going to be the worst. You know? Uh, for the record, when we were reading, I was like, Hmm, yes, Laura from the arcade. That's who I Because <laughs> Laura had blue hair once. And I was like, that, that, that's scored into my mind. There we go. That's Laura running around the place. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Laura. Oh my God, Princess and the P and Laura from the I know, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> But, um, no, it was weird that it was set in Prague too. I really should have read the blurb before I started because everything really just surprised me. I didn't know what to expect at all. Yeah, you know? I liked I liked the, the fact that it was set in Prague. It was something different. It wasn't yeah. another American novel. Aye, that's true. And she must have been to Prague or done her research or something because every every time she said she was going to this particular promenade or plaza, or whatever you could you could tell that she like was kind of mapping across the city, like she knew where she was going. Mm -hmm. That came across really well. Also, it was really good as well how, you know, whenever Akiva and Kuro were fighting in the air? Yeah. That was really good because all the humans and stuff were like, oh my god, what's going on? Because a lot it's of the people, yeah. they're conveniently hidden. Or yeah. if you do get seen, it's like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. So that was kind of cool seeing the, you know, that that was different. Like, you don't see that too often in books. Um, where they're kind of just, and it was good as well that they were kind of acting like it was some kind of carnival act and stuff. Because... You know, people are stupid and I believe whatever. So that was good. And Zuzana as well. I liked Zuzana. She was a I bit of comic relief. The yeah, scene when like Hazel or wherever and the other, other uh, girl um, are on the bridge. You know that first scene where they appear? Yeah. Is that, is that the first scene they yeah. appear? I can't remember. And like she uses her uh, power on them again. And like it's that kind of, like it's described as like a slow-mo almost. Thing. I was like, oh my God, I love it. Like I just love her. Seems. Yeah, I really liked Crow too because a lot of the time I really don't like the the main character. A, a lot of the time, like if they're, you know, kind of... okay, what happened there? <laughs> Someone died. Yeah, can please. It's off a shelf. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Did you break it? No, it's fine. It, it okay. It, it was Ezio from Assassin's Creed, and it almost fell on my head. So I almost <laughs> I was almost assassinated by an assassin. <laughs> by Ezio. <laughs> Hey, it'd be cool to read it out at a funeral. Um no, I, I a lot of the time like uh well to be honest, female protagonists, the way they're written, they really irritate me if they're like, super overpowered or if they're like really snarky and stuff, because it's just the same character over and over again and I'm just bored of it now. But I actually really liked Crow. I thought she was sweet. You know, a lot of the time, you know, she's kinda like she knows her own mind and stuff and she's it's she's not afraid to really you know, admit to herself that she's, you know, lonely and she wants a family and all that kind of stuff. It's just nicer. I suppose she was just different. She felt different to me. Like, it was good. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. Do we have any questions? No, nope, all quite on the questions front. I'm afraid. I, at least I can see if anyone's watching this right now, um, ask questions on Facebook or on Facebook. 
Should I read this book? Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> meh. Well, at least you've gone from definitely not to meh. I think that's a step in the right direction. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the Stockholm Syndrome setting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that part. On your um, Okay, well, I think we I think we can kind of leave it there. Now, I know um, Tendai is actually picking our next book, but she wasn't able to make it this evening. And for so I, it falls on me, and I'm going to pronounce, mispronounce this lady's name um, so badly, uh, or this person's name so badly. I don't know what lady. Okay, well, Mary, do you, do you want to announce Tendai's book so for, no. for me? Yeah, it's um, Akata Witch. It's called Akata Witch by Enidi Okorafor. Pretty sure I aced that. And she also wrote Binti, in case you've read Binti, and she's gotten so many awards for her writing. So we're very excited about it. Don't know much about it. I know it's about an albino girl from Nigeria, isn't it? Albino yeah. girl from Nigeria who has like magic powers. So sounds pretty I'm awesome. I'm excited for this one. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. again, it falls into the it falls into the kind of the the twelve to seventeen year old category. Uh, I, I I'll be honest with you, the the the, the plot, the, the plot, plot summary has kind of, it, I do find it quite intriguing. I haven't read Binti, but you, Tendai and Mary never stopped talking about Binti. So I'm like, yeah, okay, this, this, could, this could be good. Um, not because Mary recommended it, but because Tendai recommended it. I'll just be honest, Mary, I have not <laughs> liked the last two books that you've liked. Um, so, uh, yay, let's, let's see how we get on with the Cat or Witch. And that's, so that's say, if, if people in public that are watching this have any suggestions for any future books, Leave comments and let us yes. know what books you want us to read. Oh, we're gonna yeah. end Otherwise, we'd have to suffer through more Mary books, and nobody yeah. wants that. I didn't. Not even, not even Mary. I, I picked this one. one. Myself and Mary oh, are that's pretty. What, good. That's what. Yeah, well, hang on a second. Like Adam picked this one, and I didn't totally hate this book. So, and I really oh. hated Mary's book. <laughs> it's you, not a competition. You know, I'm convinced it's just because you hate me. But um, I didn't even read Cat of the, the Mind before I chose it. Maybe I'm just watching I, I heard you say, I didn't even read Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I just got it for no fucking reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I just, yeah, I just like to I winged it. <laughs> Great in-depth um, knowledge of the book. So yeah, we're going to be reading A Cat of Witch for the the month of May. So hopefully you, you, you've either read it um, and you want to share your opinion on it or you are going to pick it up and read along with us. Uh, it's available online and probably through some decent bookshops uh, in Ireland. So grab a copy, uh, read it for the month of May, and then join us uh, at the end of the month, and we will discuss it live here on YouTube uh, and on the arcade.ie. So, uh, guys, I think for our, I think that we can wrap up our third book club there. That 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 would be very quickly. If what uh, would you give Daughter of Smoke and Bone out of five? I'm gonna go two. Oh. I'm going three and a half. Three and I half. will go four. That's pretty good. So that balances out roughly at three and a half. I think I give yeah. Carve the Carve the Mark three and a half, and I think Duck and you gave it one. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, there we go. That that's fair. We're on the way up. Okay, so this one's yeah. yeah, this, this one's, one's marginally better than the last terrible <laughs> book we read. <laughs> but to be fair, our first book, or our first graphic novel, or whatever it was, that's doing the best so far. I think we all give that a kind of a four. Who, so who who picked who picked that? <laughs> I didn't read that, so the, the <laughs> okay. Mary probably would have given it a one, so yeah, it probably should. Uh, so it's actually, yeah, actually, it's actually one. So yeah, find two lucky stars that I didn't read that book. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, mm, indeed. Uh, anyway. Okay, so we we will leave it there. Thank you for those who watched for for joining us, and we will see you at the at the end of the month for the next book club. Yeah. Bye. Now, how do I switch this off? Oh, wait, there we go. <laughs>